Hello. Happy Monday, everybody. How are you? Good to have you here with me today in my kitchen, in your kitchen. Who knows? Are you in your kitchen? <laughs> um, yeah, happy Monday. We've made it to Monday evening. Woohoo! The rest's all downhill. Um, sorry, that's really negative, actually. I love Mondays. Mondays are probably my favourite day of the week. It's when I'm all, like, laser-focused and super productive, and I'm like, ding, 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 checking things off the to-do list and, and, yeah, getting ahead for the week. And then it all goes downhill. <laughs> um, anyway, I digress. How are you? Um, pleasure to have you here today. Um, today, we are cooking with seaweed. So... For those of you who joined me last week um, here, or for those of you who've been following me on my um, socials, on my stories, um, earlier in the week, you'll know that I was very keen to do tofush tonight. Um, however, my recipe development didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> um, in that I was trying to, I was trying to do it with seaweed flakes rather than seaweed sheets, which I would normally do. And I couldn't get the batter to stick. It just kind of flaked off with the seaweed. So um, more development needed. <laughs> I am going to do it. I am still really keen to do it. And I want to do it as a cook along. So bear with me. I'll come back to you in a few weeks and, and put that one back on the table. But um, yeah, for now, we're going to do super superfood chowder. So Mara Seaweed very kindly um, sent me some samples of their products. So they've got a kombu, um, shawnee, and um, dulse. And they're all, I didn't know this, but they're all different types of seaweed. And they've all got different kind of flavors and different nutritional profiles. So there was me thinking seaweed, seaweed, but actually um, there's a lot more to it. So very interesting. Um, but I thought since they'd sent me some samples of their product, I really had to do it justice. So I couldn't do a tofush recipe that wasn't sure if it was going to work. <laughs> so instead, we're doing the superfood chowder, which I know is loved. Um, it's available to buy on our mix and match menu, as well as in our feel good food five day meal plan. And a lot of customers say it's their favorite. So it's definitely a goodie. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Um, so... Yeah, if, even if you're not a massive chowder fan, I think it's still a really good recipe because it's not like heavy and creamy like a chowder. It's really hearty and um, substantial like a chowder, but it's, it's kind of a bit lighter. It's not got the same kind of heaviness to it um, and the beautiful taste of the ocean as well. So, um, yeah, I love it. Right, let's get down to it then. Give me a chef's hat if you're cooking with me tonight or give me a wave if you're watching. And let's get started. Um, sorry, I've, I'm, I, you might notice I normally wear glasses and I've forgotten to put them on. So <laughs> I'm a bit squinty tonight. That's why I'm like, I can't quite read your comments, but all good. Right. So let's get down to it. First up, we're going to go through the ingredients. Um, and tonight we're making enough for four people. So we've got 400 millilitres of soy milk. We've got a white onion or brown onion, whatever you call it. Um, one regular size corn in the cob or two minis. Um, a leek. A large clove of garlic, half a stock cube, 10 grams of chives, 80 grams of quinoa, half a teaspoon of black pepper, a couple of tablespoons of seaweed flakes, or if you're using sheets, two to three sheets of seaweed, um, and one 400 gram can of butter beans, um, drained and rinsed. So, um, just a couple of points on that, or any swaps or, or questions you might have on that. We've got, um, I'm using soy milk today, which I tend to use because it's got more protein in it than any other plant-based milk. But you can swap that out with any other plant-based milk of your choice. And um, the only one I'd veer away from is coconut milk, because that's got quite a strong flavor and it's almost a wee bit sweet, which you probably don't want in your chowder. Um, White onion, make sure you use white onion rather than red onion because you don't really want your chowder to go pink. <laughs> um, but, you know, taste-wise it's probably okay, but yeah, I'd, I'd use the white onion for this. Um, and that's about it, really. The rest you can do as you will. All right, so let's get cooking. I've been... brought some glasses, but they're crazy glasses. I'm not going to put them on. <laughs> um, sorry, let's get going. So, first things first, you'll also need... Um, Three saucepans. So it sounds like it's going to be a super technical recipe because you need three different saucepans, but you don't. Um, you do. It's not. 
not a technical recipe. You do need three saucepans, small, medium, and large. Um, so in your small saucepan, we're going to start off by um, cooking our quinoa in that. Um, so 80 grams of quinoa in your saucepan. And my rule with um, quinoa is double and then some in terms of the water. So we're just going to add about 200 millilitres of water into our quinoa. And then we're going to get that onto the boil. That's a rough guesstimation of 200 millilitres. So we're going to get that onto the boil, bring it to the boil, and then reduce it to a simmer. And with the quinoa, um, I'll obviously take you through this whilst we're going, but um, you can afford to maybe slightly undercook it because it will be going into the chowder at the end anyway, so it'll cook a little bit further then. Um, so we've got that on. And then in your medium saucepan, we're going to put our soy milk in there. So 400 millilitres of saucepan. Of saucepan? <laughs> of soy milk in your saucepan. So um, the only reason I say a medium saucepan for your soy milk is um, it's a precautionary tale because it can, much like dairy milk, you know, you're gently heating it and then all of a sudden it boils and boils over. So the key thing with the milk is to make sure that you're heating it gently. You don't want to boil it because as soon as you boil it, you'll get a skin on it, which doesn't work very nicely once you add that into the chowder you kind of get this weird um, scumminess on the top so you do want to make sure you're very gently heating the milk so I'm not going to put that on just yet because I'm going to prep my onion um, to go in there as well so into the soy milk we're going to add our onion seaweed and black pepper I'm going to put everything else to one side for now okay so you're going to peel and quarter the onion, so just going to peel it. We're not going to dice it, slice it, or anything. We basically are just going to add everything into this soy milk um, and let the flavours of the onion and the seaweed and the black pepper absorb into the soy milk, and then we're actually going to drain it. So it's really just kind of making almost like a seaweed broth, if you like. So I'm going to get rid of the skin there. And then I'm going to take his end off and then just quarter it. I've got quite a big onion, so I'm actually going to chop it in half there again. And then we're just going to add this into the soy milk, not from a great height, or you're going to splash it everywhere. <laughs> but um, just pop that all in there. Hi, Amy. Hi, Morag. Good to see you both. Anyone cooking or just wa just watching tonight? We've got waves. Um, so into your soy milk, you're then going to add half a teaspoon of black pepper and also two tablespoons of seaweed. Now you can add more or less depending on how fishy, if you like, you want your um, broth to be. Um, I'm using the kombu seaweed here tonight because for me it was the kind of, it's the one I preferred the most. So I'm just turning the quinoa down there to a simmer. Um, the kombu I think has got the most intense um, taste of the ocean if you like. The dulce is kind of the milder one I think and this shawnee kind of is almost smoky. It's got kind of a different, or was it the other way around? The shawnee no, the dulce, I think, is the milder one and the shawnee is kind of a bit smoky, but they're all delicious. And I was surprised by how different they all taste, actually, but really, really nice. And the great thing is you can cook with these like we're going to today, but it's also just delicious if you um, almost just use it as a salt alternative and you can sprinkle on the top. So I'm going to do it at the end once we serve up the this, this, this chowder and um, just sprinkle some on the top and just taste awesome. So, you don't even need to stir that. We're just going to make sure it's all in the soy milk and then pop that on, like I say, a low heat. I really need to get my cooker. Um, got some dodgy rings at the moment. <laughs> I'm so profesh, aren't I? Just gonna put that on to a low heat and let that um, gently heat through. Like I say, it's a very gentle heating you want to do. You don't want it boiling or anything like that. Right, so now you've got those two on the simmer. 
Um, we're now going to make the base of our chowder. So first thing, just a drizzle of oil in the bottom of the pan. You don't need much at all. And to that, we're going to add our garlic and our leek. So garlic, just going to crush that with our awesome little garlic crushing garject tool, which we love. Or you can chop it the old fashioned way. But it's just a hassle, isn't it? Um, and then the leek, the important thing with leek is to make sure that you clean it well. The last thing you want is, I'm all for dirty veg because I think it shows it's fresh. All for that. I think when you're selecting your veg, it's a good thing. But with leek, you see this one's actually really quite clean, but quite often you get some mud in between the kind of um, layers of the leek here. So you want to make sure that you wash that out. So I'm not by a sink, but if you run it under running water, that's a sure way to get it out. Or if you kind of immerse it in water and just kind of get your fingers in there and make sure you give it a good wash, just because it's not that I'm anti-mud. Sure, it won't really do you any harm, but the grittiness in your teeth isn't all that nice. <laughs> all right. So give the leak a little bath. And then we're just going to chop it. So, pop on its flat edge, and then we're just going to chop it into half moons. Maybe you want to take the top bit off as well because that bit's probably a bit dirty. And then, yeah, just give it a relatively fine chop. And then we're just going to saute that with the garlic in the bottom of our large pan. So tell me, who's watching? Who's a chowder fan? Who is, um, who has cooked with seaweed before? Um, and who's watching because they're wanting some inspiration on how to cook with seaweed? Talk to me. I actually love seaweed, but I don't really cook with it that often. But, um, well, I've got a few go-to dishes if you like, but I'm always keen to find new dishes to experiment with seafood. So any suggestions on seafood dishes, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Right, so the leek goes in to the large pan. I've just put that onto a medium heat and we're just going to saute the leek with the garlic. And whilst I've been um, talking so much about seaweed this week, I found out some super interesting things actually. Not only um, is it great for a substitute for fish, but um, it's really good for your health as well. So it's, it's, well, it's a great substitute for fish because it's more sustainable than fish farming, obviously. Um, but also it's great for your health and particularly for women, um, middle-aged women and older women. I'm not entirely sure whether I fall into the middle-aged woman bracket. Yeah, I don't think I do. I think I'm still a spring chicken. Um, but I might be in denial there. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. I'm definitely not middle-aged yet, but I'm not sure what qualifies. But it's never too early for preventative measures. Um, but sea seaweed is high in iodine. And in you... Oh, wonderful. I finally got some glasses so I can see the comments coming up. <laughs> seaweed is... Oh, it's like night and day. There, what was I saying about being middle-aged and ageing? <laughs> Um, Morag, exactly. It's good for your thyroid. You got, you, got there, um, you got there much quicker than I was waffling around it. So seaweed has a lot of iodine in it. It's got more than your recommended daily allowance of iodine. Um, and that is really good for your thyroid. And women who are of um, getting older are prone to an underactive thyroid. And the list of symptoms, as I started Googling this, and I know, I'm, don't worry, I'm not becoming like a nutrition expert from Google, and I'm not claiming to be. So if you've got any problems with this, then absolutely see a nutritionist or a doctor. But um, yeah, the list of symptoms of an underactive thyroid is just like a nightmare. It's basically everything you don't want. So seaweed's delicious. You only need a teaspoon of it a day, and you get your daily recommended allowance of iodine. So I'm, I'm an absolute convert. Um, Morag, also, um, 
you're saying you've never cooked with seaweed, but you don't even have to cook with it. So literally, once we've done this, I'm just going to sprinkle some on the top. And your recommended daily allowance is literally a teaspoon. So if you swap out any salt that you use over the course of the day for seaweed, it's awesome because it tastes like seaweed's got a real salty taste to it. It's got that kind of salty taste of the ocean. But um, it's got, it's something like seaweed has, um, it's like 8 to 12 or something. It's really low percent of sodium. Whereas salt has something like 98% sodium or something. And it's the sodium that's the bad part of salt. So it's a super healthy alternative salt. So even if you don't want to cook with it, you don't really like the fishiness of it, you can just replace it as salt in any old meal. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a super healthy alternative for that. Um, oh, Amy says she loves a seaweed salad. That's interesting. I've never had a seaweed salad. How did that go? Sounds interesting. Like raw seaweed or cooked seaweed. Mmm, sounds good though. Um, yeah, you absolutely should, Morag. It's like, try this Mara seaweed as well because it is so delicious. I would personally would recommend the kombu. Um, like I say, they've got, they've got two others, Shawnee and Dulce. The kombu, I think, for me, is the tastiest. And somebody also said the kombu is the most nutritious out of the three as well. So give it a go, definitely. Right, so back to the hob. You can see that leeks are sorting away there and um, going a lovely vibrant green, which is what we want. We'll just let them soften down a little bit more, but that's what you want them to be, this lovely vibrant color. And they smell delicious as well. I think um, leeks are totally underrated. I'm just gonna give my soy milk a little stir, but all good there, nothing boiling. Looks a bit weird, because you've got all this seaweed in it, and it's a bit, yeah, you just got some random onions and seaweed floating in your milk, but trust the process, my friends. Um, yeah, leeks, totally underrated. You always go to an onion, but leeks have got so much richness of flavour in them. They kind of do the same job as an onion, but got a really kind of nice taste to them. Right, so next up, I'm going to um, chop my corn. And I would recommend, you can, of course, use... Um, Tim sweet corn, frozen sweet corn, all of those will absolutely work. And I would probably say about somewhere between 80 to 100 grams of it, not even maybe, um, if you're gonna use that rather than a corn in the cob. I like using a corn in the cob because it tastes fresher, it tastes sweeter. Um, I'm also gonna add the cob into the chowder um, and let that kind of boil away for a while because you get extra flavor from that as well. Um, and obviously gonna take it out, we're not gonna eat the cob, don't worry. I've not gone crazy. Um, so yeah, basically just run down, as you saw there, just run down the sides of the, co the corn and the cob and take off the corns and then set the cob aside and we'll add that in as well. So I'm just gonna turn the heat down slightly on our leeks here and I'm gonna add the cobs and also the corn. Okay, and then stir that through. Just beautiful, beautiful colors in there now, the green of the leek and the yellow of the sweet corn. Yum. Perfect. And then into that, we're now gonna add, I've already drained and rinsed my butter beans. I'm gonna add them in there too. If you don't have butter beans, you can use any bean you like. I'd stick to a white bean. So cannellini bean or haricot bean. Butter beans, personal favorite, just because they're nice and soft and big and it's quite a nice kind of meaty part of the dish, if you like, it gives you something to chow down on. <laughs> and your chowder. Easily amused. Perfect. So give that all a good stir. It's a bit random having your cobs in there, but they're adding a little something, something. And then into that, we're gonna add um, about 700 milliliters of water. So I'm not gonna add all of that and half a stock cube. I'd go easy, wouldn't add the full stock cube because there is quite a lot of salty flavor from the um, seaweed. So just half a stock cube will do. Pop that in there. 
And now we just wait. Bring your big pot to the boil. You're basically going to bring it to a boil and let that sort of simmer for about five, ten minutes to get all the flavour out. Check in on the quinoa. That could do with a little bit of more water in there. It doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot. And I'm going to bring that up to a bit of a simmer again. It's just sort of sitting there, not doing much. And then check back in on your soy milk. That seems to be bubbling away a little bit there. So I'm just going to turn it down. But what you essentially want with your soy milk is for it to taste delightful. So I'm just going to have a little taste. Mm. It does taste delightful. I'm just going to let that continue to um, heat through whilst we're bringing everything else up to the boil and cooked. And then we're going to... It's a bit of a mind game watching three saucepans. <laughs> um, we're going to drain the quinoa once that's ready and add that into the main pan and then we're also going to drain the soy milk. So basically we're not going to add that um, seaweed into the chowder, we're just going to add the flavour of it. And that's, uh, generally speaking, I do that when I'm using the seaweed sheets because you don't want these floating bits of seaweed sheets in your, in your soup. With these seaweed flakes, you could absolutely just add them straight into the pan and cook with it. But you can see they're sort of, um, they're kind of not the prettiest. So you get all the flavor of it without actually having the kind of seaweed parts in your, in your soup. You can, you can add it. I'm just gonna turn this off now because it's starting to boil and it's gonna get that scumminess to it. Um, we're gonna add some more to the top as well. So it's probably a personal preference. You can add, you can add the seaweed flake into the um, main dish if you like, or you can serve them on the top. Um, so yeah. So, oh, any, any questions? Hit me some questions. Otherwise, I'm just gonna chat to you. I've realized um, today, it's a big milestone. Got a little pop-up on Facebook telling me that um, it's our one year anniversary of live streaming, of doing our cook-along. Um, which is kind of cool. So if you're interested, go and check out this time last year. It was a funny time because we were sort of like just starting out in lockdown and all kind of hysterical and doing as everything we could online. So here I was like, oh, we'll do some live cook-alongs. It'll be great during lockdown. And then that'll end and we'll go back to normal and that never happened. <laughs> here we are, still in Groundhog Day, cooking along every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's pretty cool if you look back though. Um, it's pretty cool to see how far we've come. So this time last year, I'm not saying we're absolute experts um, now by any stretch, but if you look at this time last year, um, well, A, I kind of dreaded it. I was doing it because I sort of thought I should do it. And, um, sorry, twiddling with my dials. I always forget which one's which. Um, and I found it so nerve wracking and I was really uncomfortable and awkward. And um, we were sort of in a dark corner of the kitchen and it was all just a bit amateur hour. But um, yeah, and I think cameraman does a wonderful job now. And um, I actually really quite enjoy it rather than feeling like it's a absolute chore. So I feel like we've come quite a long way. Thanks guys. All the love for the, all the love for the cook along anniversary. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit of a milestone and it's exciting because not only um, have we made it to a year but it's becoming a much more important part of the business as well. So previously we were all just about um, cooking our food and delivering it to you which we're still absolutely all about and that's the main part of the business but um, as I keep saying we're launching this new online meal planner which is pretty exciting and due to launch this week and um, relaunch I should say we've already done quite a lot of test testing with it but this is the official launch launch um, this week so all hands to the deck feeling a little bit stressful um, but by the end of this week we should be in a position where you can subscribe to an online meal plan and with that you'll get loads of cooking videos um, you'll get live meal prep videos so more like this where I'm in your kitchen um, 
and yeah, loads of content every month, com more coming every single month. So yeah, it's exciting. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Right, better get back to the kick cooker because it's all kind of kicking off over here. Um, that is our quinoa ready. So I'm going to drain the quinoa now. You can see it's just kind of... I'm not testing it because it doesn't matter if it's not quite done because we're going to um, put it into the chowder, but it's pretty much there. Just going to drain that off there and add it into the chowder. Turn the chowder down to a simmer now. Give it a bit of a stir. And then at this point, probably a good time to take those corn and the cobs out so we don't forget about it. <laughs> What's all this, guys? Well done, cameraman. What about me? <laughs> Yes, well done, cameraman. I have to be honest, actually. Cameraman, um, from the very beginning, it was cameraman who was driving this because I was a bit like, mm, I don't want to get in front of camera. Um, so, yeah. Well done, cameraman. I think most of the progress is on his part. I'm still a bit of a waffly chef. Chef's a bit of a stretch, even. <laughs> right, so I've just taken out the corner of the cobs there, turned the chowder down to a simmer, and then at this point, I'm also going to um, drain our soy milk broth, if you like. So just gently pour that over a, sink, a sieve into a jug. And we're going to get all the soy milk goodness out of there. And that's going to give us the milkiness of our chowder. And you want to make sure you really let this kind of sit and let all that flavor seep out of the seaweed because it's all about the flavor that you get from the onions and the seaweed in here. So just going to let that sit. Um. <laughs> Sorry guys, I've made you all feel bad. I just didn't read your comments that said I was good too. <laughs> I'm so needy. <laughs> right. Oh, watch you don't spill all over the edge, which I probably am. Sorry. What I would do if you're cooking along in your own time is just let this sit. I'm sort of trying to speed this process up a little bit for the purpose of not keeping you guys hanging but just let it sit so it can, all that liquid can drain out of it, which I'm just going to set aside and let that do now whilst we chop the chives. Right, so we've got 10 grams of chives here. Um, and we're just going to chop them finely. They don't need any cooking. We're just going to stir them through once the rest of it's done. Gives it a lovely extra green hit and nice freshness too. Wonderful. All right. So at this point, your chowder's looking good. I'm going to turn the heat off on that now. Pour our soy milk broth in there. I'm just going to give it a little bit of extra draining to try and get any further flavour out of that. Squeeze it. Oh, try not to get any extra onion peel in there. <laughs> um, yeah, just squeeze the seaweed flavour out of that as much as you can because that is the good bit. But yeah, so this week I I'm such a convert. I kind of actually maybe naively thought that seaweed was just basically, uh, I kind of thought it was a good source of omega-3 actually, which I think I was completely mistaken on. And actually it's much more about the iodine, which is cool. 
and obviously a low sodium alternative salt. So it's all, all good news for the seaweed. Also, in terms of sustainability, not only is it more sustainable than seaweed, seafood, sorry, I keep just mixing up seaweed and seafood all the time, can't help it. Not only is it much more sustainable than seafood farming, um, it's potentially, or all signs point to it, having a positive impact on the environment because seaweed um, absorbs CO2 and emits oxygen. So it's actually like a natural filter. It absorbs all the, all the bad stuff and puts out good stuff. It's obviously what photosynthesis, is it? Is that what plants do? But um, seaweed grows so fast, it does it at a much faster rate. <laughs> Here comes the bad science. Right, now we're just going to put those chopped chives into the pan, give it a stir around. By this point, I've turned off the heat because we're already kind of all cooked. And like I say, you don't want to boil your soy milk too much, otherwise you get that scummy film. So I just turned off. I realized at this point, not only did I forget my glasses today, but I forgot a bowl to serve it in. So <laughs> before we serve it, I'm just gonna give it a wee taste. Mm, oh God, it's so delicious. I absolutely love it. It's so good. Um, cameraman's really only good for the filming. He's passed me a bowl that's like a giant dog bowl. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We've got plenty, we'll fill it up. <laughs> oh dear. Here we go. Slightly smaller bowl. Um, so, here we go, let's serve. So like I say, it's not like super creamy like a chowder, but it is super hearty. Like, look how much goodness there is in there. And not only is it super hearty, it's packed with protein. So you've got the protein from the butter beans, you've got the protein, a complete protein in the form of the quinoa and also in the form of the soy milk. So it's packed full of protein, so it's super filling. You don't need nearly as much of this <laughs> for a serving. I'm just filling the bowl so you can see it. But, um, and look at all that lovely greenness from the leeks and the chives and the sweet corn. It's just so delicious. Um, so yeah, it's an absolute, absolute delight. And it really is so tasty. The taste of the ocean, I think that's the only, only way I can describe it because it's not exactly fishy but it's got a lovely, rich taste of the ocean. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Um, anyone who wants to cook along, or not cook along, cook in their own time, then I'll post a link to the blog where it's got the full recipe and the list of ingredients so you can make it anytime you want. Or if you don't want to make it, you just want me to deliver it to your door, <laughs> then I can do that too. Um, check out our shop, um, which is at newnorm.co.uk forward slash collections. Um, and you'll find that they are both in the homemade ready meals section and also in the feel good food plan. Um, what was I gonna say there? Yeah, anyone who does normally buy our ready meals, um, you'll see that our website's changed a little bit more and there's a few extra bits in there. So there's a few different ways you can buy our products now. So don't let that throw you. Everything's still there. There's just a few different combinations as well. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I hope I've inspired you to cook with seaweed and do share some of your creations if you get curious and get cooking with seaweed. I'd love to see what you make. All right, take care and I'll see you next week. Bye.